I often get asked two main questions from consumers. First, what's the best bank for my buck when I'm buying a new truck? Second, which truck's gonna last the longest? Those are two key questions I get, and I'm excited today to share with you some data I was able to get this morning from iccars.com that actually shows which truck is the best bang for the buck and which one will last the longest. Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. Trucks are obviously my passion. It's your passion, your passion too. Hit subscribe, click the bell, stick around. We have a good time on this channel. I have a good time. And I'm getting back doing a lot of videos, kick off the first of the year, a lot of stuff coming towards you. Make sure you follow along for that. So if you go to the website, pickuptrucktalk.com, I have quite a few interesting articles going out there. I'll have some more videos in these articles as well. But in the top left-hand corner, you see an article that says, best trucks for the money. Depending on how you watch this video or when you watch this video, I'll put a link in the description to this post, and I'll put it a pinned comment too so you can find it. So if you want to go through the details, look at them on the screen and take your time. I totally get it. I tend to talk fast. I tend to mumble. So I'll try my best not to mumble, 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 whatever. So looking at this, I have a picture of a pretty badass to a Tacoma on the front because I just thought it looked pretty badass. But uh, it's always hard to find photos of these type of stories. But looking at the, we're going to talk first about the study. The study is from iccars.com. Think of like a, a cars.com or cargurus.com, a site that has new and used cars for sale. They looked at and analyzed 8.3 million new vehicles sold from September 2023 through December 2023. My understanding is this is consumer vehicles not fleet and i'll get to the explanation for why that is in a minute this is 8.3 million new vehicles sold by consumers they did cars they did compact cars luxury cars we have they also did suvs too uh managing editor jill smanel is working on a post right now and we'll have a video on the best suvs as well I'll have probably that video tomorrow so working on that too so they took that information they put it in a spreadsheet and charts and people do this numbers kind of stuff and then they compared this information with a prior longest lasting vehicle study of 181 million used vehicle odometer readings. So they basically took what the vehicle sold for, then they took new, looked at all the new and used, or excuse me, all the used vehicles in the marketplace over the past 10 years, which is really important too, and looked at odometer readings and readings. And so they figured out like what the longest lasting was. So they took 10 years of data, did it, all the numbers of odometer ranking readings, divided them out, went from there. I initially had typed in ranking, so sorry, I keep putting that word in my brain. That's my, my brain works. Uh, looking at this information, we looked at, they calculated the average price per 10,000 miles, which is how much you spent versus what it was bought. It's, it's an interesting number. It doesn't really mean anything, but it's kind of interesting. So we're looking at, first of all, we have best mid-size trucks. I'm going to talk to you about mid-size and best full-size truck. So best mid-size truck, a lot of information here, links to different articles and things, reliability stuff. If you're shopping for a truck, this is an article that's really important to you. Trust me. I found it really interesting. So looking at this, we have a ranking. We have averages and we have price per 10,000 miles, average new car price, in our case, a truck, average lifespan in miles. At the top of the ranking, we have the Toyota Tacoma, three syllables, Tim, Toyota Tacoma. The price per 10,000 miles was, was a little bit over $1,700. What's interesting here is average new vehicle price was 41727 which is actually the cheapest out of our entire study, which I thought was fascinating because... The Toyota Tacoma is often known for having a Toyota tax and being one of the most expensive mid-sized trucks out there. So this is very interesting. What's also interesting is this is not the new 2024 model, which we've already discussed. It's a little bit more expensive. So this is the prior generation, which may actually have made price go down because dealers are trying to blow them out, which is a really common thing to do when you have a new model coming in. Now, looking at average lifespan of miles, 239,028. So that's about 30 some thousand miles above industry average. The Honda Ridgeline comes in second, which is pretty interesting. It's the, is it a truck? Is it not a truck? Do you know body? Not a body? People argue about this all the time, but it is still on our list as a mid-sized truck. Average new vehicle price was 44225 And I think that's because that customer is a little bit older customer. They tend to buy a little higher trim level. They want more features. They're able to spend more money. They have more, you know, cash in a wallet. But looking at average lifespan, 243000 Well, Honda, Honda, Toyota, and usually Nissan, whoo, teaser there, uh, typically have the better reliability. But in this case, I don't know if they do. So looking at midsize truck average, we have average midsize truck, 42,406. Again, average. You will see videos on YouTube all the time about trucks that cost way more than that. And again, as journalists, we typically get only high trim levels. We don't tend to get the lower trim levels. That's the reason for that. So looking at this price, you have 243,000. 
for 243,000 for, uh, excuse me, 206,000 for average lifespan of miles, $42,406. The Chevy Colorado comes in third. I'm going to move my image here on the screen. Give me one second, folks. There we go. Let's do that a little bit differently. Maybe you can see the, you can see the chart a little bit better. That's why, I was like, that's why I screwed up because I was looking at the uh, screen. So looking at the Chevy Colorado, we have that as third, 42,000. Average vehicle lifespan, 181,745. Then we have the GMC Canyon, which is the most expensive vehicle on our list. I think the reason for that is most people that go to GMC, they buy the highest trim level with the most features. That's why people go to GMC. Chevrolet is now the body, kind of volume brand. And GMC is now your premium brand. So your average transaction price is typically higher for a GMC vehicle. Looking at the average miles, 172,381. Now keep in mind, this is over the, past, the span of 10 years. This is all your natural aspirated engines. That's all your V6 engines. This is not the new turbocharged engines, which we won't know that until, well, we get more and more data. Nissan Frontier comes in last, which is kind of shocking. <laughs> I've been doing this job 14 years, and Nissan Frontier has always been typically pretty good reliability with, with the Toyota Tacoma. In this case, it's not. I don't know. That's that's surprising. I don't know what's going on with this, but 144,722 mi miles, average odometer rankings, 10 years of used, used trucks. Um, that's pretty shocking to me. I, it really stood out to me to say, wow. Uh, I'm curious if you put comments down below. What do you guys think that reason for that is? I don't remember any Nissan Frontier having many reliability problems. They hadn't changed that model for years and years. It was like, was it 2019 when they did a new engine? Like 2020 when they changed the interior and exterior? So they really haven't made that many changes over the past 10 years. And for that to come in at the bottom of our, of our list is just, whew, that is a shocking uh, development there, folks. And I have more shocking news for you. So let's let's scroll a little bit more. Uh, grab your popcorn, sit back, pop top, because you need to uh, relax when you see these numbers. Uh, going all the way down to the bottom, we have the full size trunk rank, trunk rankings, and look at that, the Toyota Tundra is number two. This is the first time I've ever seen this. This has got me fired up because I've been doing, like I said, I've done tons of videos on this stuff for years and years. I've done reliability stuff because it matters to you, it matters to me, and I buy new vehicles because I want to know too. So looking at this stuff, we have Chevy Servato is number one, which is average vehicle price, 57129 which is actually below the industry average. Lifespan, almost 200,000 miles, which is pretty pretty good. I mean, people tell me 10, 15 years. Well, if you drive a truck 15,000 miles a year, you should last 10 years. You should last, I mean, 15,000. If I were to do the math, 15,000 times 15 years, because I'm terrible at math, 225,000 miles. You're right in that spell, that right in that realm of average. That should last you a lot long. The Toyota Tundra, 64, 824. I've theorized the vehicle price is a little bit higher because the new Tundra is out. And they typically put out the higher trim levels to buy, and inflation and vehicle pricing right now is pretty high. But the Chevy Silverado is out there too. So I don't know. It's it, I could make an argument either way. 226,000 miles for the for the Tundra. Now that is the most on our list, which tells me reliability, hey, is pretty good. But look, I mean, again, look at the price you pay for that extra 25,000 miles. I don't know that it really adds up. I don't know. Again, put your comments down below. Uh, we have the Ram 1500, which is not a surprise to me. We have a better lifespan as far as the life of the vehicle. Ram has made a lot of improvements in the past 10 years, especially to improve reliability. The Hemi's been pretty strong. We have a new 2025 I shoot up in the video about a month ago. 2025 Ram 1500 coming out this year. So it'll be interesting to see if that number changes. Typically, new vehicles coming out, reliability goes down, not because powertrains are bad, but typically it's infotainment system we're seeing these days and software is not working out or a weird issue here and there. Uh, a screen's going dead because of the earlier update. Just strange things happen. Ford F-50 comes in fourth. Vehicle price 61,554, 177,465. What surprises me is the volume. Like, and I think I get to read my story a little bit because I talked about fleet, and I'll exp I explain that in a minute. I wrote the story, and I got a quote back from IC Cars. But um, typically, the Ford F-150 and the Chevy Silverado had the highest volume of trucks sold. And so I would see those, to me, the odds would be they'd be lower in the list. I would imagine that Chevy and Ford would be kind of neck and neck in the bottom, but they're not, which is, again, kind of a shocker. Uh, GMC Sierra, again, highest transaction price. And the reason for that, again, Denali, Denali Ultimate, 84, 84X. GMC does not really build a cheap truck anymore as compared to the Chevy. Chevy's now volume. GMC's now premium brand, just different things. 
683,652. Interesting there too. And keep in mind, this is 10 years. These are V8 engines and the old uh, uh, V6. The 2.7 liter turbocharged engine they're using these days is not really in these, this chart that much because it hasn't been out that long. It's only been out since 2019, so only three, four years of data. My theory is, and, and we're seeing more and more people buying the turbocharged engine, better performance, better horsepower torque, funner to drive. Fuel economy, not so much, but everything else is kind of fun. Uh, Nissan Titan, wow. Again, it's about the same number of mileage that the Nissan Frontier is. Mileage. Oh, for the mileage. Same uh, n- number of mileage that the Nissan Frontier is. And it's shocking to me because I thought for quite a while, and maybe I'm wrong, that Nissan has pretty good reliability. Look at the information. The information is going right in my face, right? It's just like, wow. But looking at the vehicle pricing, 57000 kind of on par with the Chevy Silverado below the price. I think part of that is, is also because Nissan Frontier is dead. It's going away. So dealers are blowing those out as far as big sales and discounts. Now, what about heavy duty and compact? Well, I reached out to IC Cars and they specifically said it excluded the heavy duty trucks from its list because it focuses on consumer oriented studies and heavy duty trucks are often considered more commercial. I don't know if I really buy that, but okay, that's their reasoning. That's why I don't have anything. And it's said, said, you can say the same thing for compact trucks. This time it's the, they're a different reason. They're not continuously in production over the last decade. The Ford Maverick and Hyundai Santa Cruz are just too new. That's that's the bottom line. They're just too new to be in this overall study. So what did we learn? We learned that while Nissan wasn't as reliable as I thought, maybe, if you look at the average as far as odometer rankings, or Nissan owners don't drive that far. Not sure that's the case. We also learned that Chevy and Ford, well, they, uh, they did really well, Chevy did, in full size. And not so well in midsize, which kind of matches up the sales. And then Ford did really well in the F-150 as far as, uh, excuse me, making the list. The Ford Ranger did not make the list because the Ford Ranger has been in and out of production, back and forth. The Chevy Colorado was out one year, but that was about nine, ten years ago. So it seems like they included that list because it's been they've had sales of that. And they've had numbers of that. Ford Ranger was not in the market for a couple of years. That's not why it's that's why it's not on the list. Jeep Land the same reason. We also learned that the Toyota Tundra did not do as well as the Toyota Tacoma, which is kind of interesting. It seems like those two would be one, two, one, two doesn't one. I mean, one, one in both, both markets. If you're looking at the overall odometer rankings and readings <laughs> and price, but we also learned that the numbers are all about the same, right? So if you look at the, the, the information, as far as the odometer readings, you're looking at the difference between 30, 40,000 miles. So you're looking at one year, two years on average, looking at the total of all the vehicles on that they looked at 181 million. So not a huge difference, not saying that you're gonna drive a Ford of Lotus can go <laughs> versus a Tundra is gonna drive for 20 years, right? That's not always the case as it used to be anymore. And I think it's really interesting that the Toyota Tundra, again, huge reliability, massive, awesome, but the V8, not top of the list. That's gonna create a lot of controversy. That could be my thumbnail. So if you see the thumbnail, like the Tundra in there, that's probably where this came from, right here, right now. You saw it. All right, for more things you want to see, <laughs> see what I did there? Check the video over here, website down below as well, pickuptrucktalk.com. We have a forum over there too. Good details. Now, <laughs> check that out as well. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road. See, I have fun. You subscribe, stick around. It's good time.